Hello, friend. <laughs> Welcome back to the grow room. I feel like we have spent way too much time. Well, not way too much time. It's been fantastic spending so much time in the kitchen together. But I have to say, a little change of scenery, <laughs> a little change of scenery does the heart good. So yesterday I placed my first seed order. Today I plan to place the last three. I'm ordering from four companies this year. I will link them all down below. And I need to get this room in order. We had a little bit of a problem in here over the winter and it's become one completely unorganized. I shouldn't say completely unorganized, but it's become a little bit of a catch all. Josh was doing some maintenance to the freeze dryer. So this is all pushed out. And the biggest problem I had right here, my peppers that I was trying to overwinter. And I had been watering them and they were doing okay up until a big problem happened. I'm gonna show you, I, I don't know if I can actually show you the actual problem, but I can probably show you evidence of the problem. I have been starting seeds indoors for the last, this is gonna be my fourth year in a row. Last year was probably the best success I ever had, but you see how all these plants are dead? These are dying, that's a weed in there. These are some pansies that are growing. But let me see if I can show you up close. That bug right there, I don't know if it's alive or dead anymore, but all those little dots on the leaves, those are, oh man, here you can see a ton right here. This is not a pleasant thing to look at. Let's see, you see all that, those bugs on that leaf? Those little bugs are what are called fungus gnats, and they are a pretty common pest when it comes to seed starting and or growing things inside, indoor house plants. I personally have never had an issue with them. I think what I should not have done is dig out the plants from the ground. Those were my Tabasco pepper plants and I had a Chinese five color pepper plant. Put them in potting mix that was outside in here. I think I brought them in and I I created the problem. Plus, if you look right here, I put my green stalks in here, which was probably not a very good idea either. And so I had a huge fungus gnat infestation. They were flying around, it was gross. And so I tried to treat them. What I did is I ended up just putting the plants out there. Those plants are gonna die because it's too cold outside. And now we need to deal with the fungus gnat problem that I have in here before I start any seeds in here. So what I've done, Oh, see, that might be one right there. <laughs> There's a little bug flying around. I don't know if it is. Is I purchased these fungus gnat sheets. There, it says non-toxic, pesticide-free, eco-friendly, yellow sticky traps. Control fungus gnats, white flies, aphids, and leaf miners. So we need to deal with this problem. So any input you all have on my problem, I would greatly appreciate. I've read about it but I still yet am no expert. So this sticky stuff is super sticky. It's not sticky yet because there's a little container of a film on it. And it comes with these sheets. And then we're gonna hang these up and we're gonna be able to figure out how many more fungus gnats we have in here. I did deal with the main problem, which was getting that contaminated plants and soil out of here but I wanna make sure I deal with any that might still be in here that could start breeding in the seedling. Fungus gnats like moist soil, and so they can be a problem. They can devastate your seedlings, and I don't want that. If I'm gonna go through the effort of starting hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds of seedlings, I don't want fungus gnats. So what I'm gonna do, this is really sticky, and so I'll be able to check and control how many actually stick on here, and so we'll know when the problem has been eradicated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a couple of these. This is where the main problem was because this is where I was having my pepper plants hang out. And we're just going to put this up here. We're also going to do seed organization and inventory. I've actually kept these seeds relatively organized, which I'm pretty proud of myself. We need to remove all of this soil from out of here, just in case any of, this is not wet. I've not obviously watered, there's nothing in here this, so I don't think these are gonna be a problem, but I wanna get these out of here as well. I want to remove my landscape fabric and just clean this area. So as soon as my seeds start coming in, then we can start 
starting seeds. We're actually gonna start our sweet potato slips today. And then I need to remove all of this soil as well. I'm not gonna throw this soil away. This is some good potting soil that I didn't end up using. There's a fungus net right there, flying around. This bucket is empty, but I have some soil in here and I'm not going to throw this away. I don't think, unless you think I should, or not throw it away, but like put it in my woods or something. I think I can use it outside, but I know that I don't wanna use any of this stuff for seed starting in case it might be contaminated. So we're gonna get all of this out of here. I was reading that neem oil is also a thing you could spray on the affected plants. I maybe have been able to save my two pepper plants or my three pepper plants, but I didn't wanna risk it. I thought it wasn't worth trying to save those and then possibly having infected soil in here and then starting thousands of seeds. I thought it would be better for the greater good to sacrifice those plants and start over. But I can tell you those pepper plants were looking really good up until the point that the infestation started. So I'm gonna get a couple more of these up and around the seed growing room. There's a couple things in here that don't belong in here, so we're gonna get a bunch of that and put it way where it goes. Get this hung up over here. Nicole from Flower Hill Farm is the first person I saw use these, and that's where I, I just bought them on Amazon, and I can link them for you if you're interested in them. Let's see, how does it... Why yellow color boards? Most of the pests have phototaxis, a yellow, is their favorite color of a common pest like aphids, leaf miners, fungus gnats, thrips, white flies, black flies, fruit flies, and so on. And so they just like yellow and they stick themselves to it. How long should the traps last? The, tra the traps will stay sticky and attractive for two to three months. Change sooner if the surface is covered. I was trying to trap one, I didn't get it. The next thing I want to do, and I want to tackle this next because this is going to take some time. So I actually want to sanitize all of my seed starting equipment. So a lot of these are Epic Garden. I'll link these down below and they are seed starting trays that are dishwasher safe, which is absolutely incredible because these ones I've been using for the past three years. The first ones I purchased were, hor were horrible and they, I, they broke a long time ago. They didn't even last me one year. These ones have been pretty decent and have lasted me a good amount of time, but they are a pain to clean. And because they have 52 cells, the whole thing, sometimes they're hard to actually use in the garden and plant out. And so these ones are pretty cool from Epic Garden because I can throw them in the dishwasher. They're so durable and I can sanitize them really easily. So that's what I want to do now because this is going to take time to run through the dishwasher. The reason I want to do this, I did not do this last year, is because I want to reduce the risk of mold issues and anything that might be contaminated. Some of these I haven't used, so the ones I haven't used, I'm not going to go ahead and wash, just the ones that have been used. So I'm gonna get these inside, start loading my dishwasher. It's gonna take me quite a few runs to get these through the dishwasher. Quick disclaimer, I am not a gardening expert. This is my fourth year. I've got some knowledge under my belt, but now with this bug problem, <laughs> I feel like I don't know what I'm doing, but we'll figure it out together. You may ask yourself, why go through the effort of starting your own seeds? Because it is a fraction of the price once you have the equipment. The equipment is an investment, but a start at my local box store and even some of my local nurseries is almost $6 a start. I am gonna be starting hundreds, if not a couple thousand seeds. So once I own this equipment, it's way worth doing it myself because seeds are cheap compared to starts. And so that's what we're gonna do. But first, we need to sanitize all these goodies. This morning, I made sure that I got my dishwasher unloaded. 
So I think what I'm gonna start with are the actual trays themselves because I have more of these to wash. You know what, no, I'm gonna start with the cells because these are gonna be more of a pain if I was gonna wash them by hand. So I'm just gonna get these in the dishwasher. I think I could even put them like this. Dishwasher is running. <laughs> my seed starting trays don't fit in my particular dishwasher, which is not a big deal. I'd rather the cells go in there because they were gonna be a pain to clean anyway. These are not gonna be a big deal to clean. I have cleaned these many, many times. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go get some I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna use vinegar or bleach. I think vinegar. I think what I'm gonna do, let me Google it real quick. Let's have Google tell me what I should do. I have to say I'm pretty proud of myself. What I was planning on doing is exactly what this says from Bootstrap Firmer, which is actually where I got these trays from, the original trays that I purchased many years ago. It says, we suggest using a mild detergent and hot water. So I'm gonna wash it with soap and water. Remove the dirt after thoroughly rinsing the tray. Spray them down with diluted vinegar. One part vinegar to one part water. Let it sit for 10 minutes and then rinse. Which is exactly what I was thinking I was gonna do. But I was also thinking I might do bleach. <laughs> and so I was deciding if I was going to do vinegar or bleach. And so I'm glad I Googled that because we will do vinegar. So I'm gonna scrub all these down really well. Another plus of starting your own seeds is you get to control what varieties you want to start. When you go to your big box stores or your local nurseries, you might have only a few varieties of each type of plant, or you might have one variety of say cucumbers to choose from versus if you shop seed catalogs you can choose from hundreds of varieties of tomatoes and peppers and squash and pumpkins that best suit your local climate or your region based on weather and all of those things so those are two of my pros is that it can be cost savings and it can be beneficial that you can choose from hundreds of varieties of snapdragon colors versus you know the two that the local box store has to offer you but there are some challenges when it comes to starting seeds. The investment of the equipment is pretty great. This has taken me four years to get the amount of equipment I have because I've slowly started to collect my seed starting equipment. The first year I was gardening, I could not afford to put in my garden and buy grow lights and high quality trays and seed starting equipment. So I still started hundreds of starts with no grow lights, no heat mat, and pretty low quality trays and it was a pretty big failure because to start seeds indoors you really need grow lights or at least in my experience i really needed grow lights i could not get healthy starts so that was good because it, i learned from it and the next year i was able to afford and invest in some grow lights and some better quality seed trays because the seed trays i originally bought were so poor quality they didn't even last a year they were just really, really cheap plastic. So I was able to afford some of my bootstrap farmer trays my second year. I was able to get for Christmas some grow lights. And that year I was able to grow some pretty healthy starts. Not a ton. I still had most of my starts die. And that was still good because it was learning. All of this stuff takes practice and experience you know we can watch gardeners online but it is very regional gardening from my last homestead to this homestead is very very different and so practice makes progress and so even though it's taken me years to get to the point where i feel more comfortable starting seeds and having healthy seedlings it's taken that experience to get to that point so my third year starting seeds i probably only killed about half of the starts that I planted. <laughs> One thing I was missing was I did not realize how much nutrients seedlings took. So that third year I had the equipment I needed and I was able to start a ton of things and we were able to put a ton of those seedlings out into the ground. 
but the one thing I was missing was the nutrient aspect. So last year was my absolute best year starting seeds. We did it together and the biggest thing was I understood that seedlings need nutrients and light. So I understood the light aspect because my first year trying to attempt to grow seeds without grow lights was disastrous. But when you purchase just seed starting mix that's sterile in the grocery store, there's hardly any nutrients in it. And when you're trying to get those seedlings to germinate, that's okay. Seeds have what they need to germinate and get themselves going in the actual seed themselves. But as soon as they start growing, they need nutrients. And so that is the key component that I learned last year. And so I started my seeds in Vermont compost, and then I kept watering them using an organic fertilizer. Every time I watered them, they got organic fertilizer and the seedlings were stunning. And so that is what I'm gonna do again this year. And I'm just hoping that with these precautions that I'm taking by trying to take care of the bug infestation and trying to reduce the risk of mold and fungus by cleaning these trays, we will have a successful year. And you and I will see together how well things go, because I'll bring you along for the successes and for the failures. And I always have the backup of going to the store and getting seedlings if I need to, but the goal would be to try to start them myself. So now that those trays are drying a little bit, what I wanna do is come back out here. Once they've dried a little bit, then I'm going to focus on getting them disinfected. So I think in the meantime, I need to decide what I'm gonna do with these. Now these here are gonna be an absolute pain to clean. Trust me, I know because I've cleaned them before. And I'm gonna use a combination of a bunch of things to seed start. I am not married to any one seed starting method. I like soil blocking, I like trays. These are an air pruning tray because there's the big holes, so it's supposed to help prevent things from getting root bound. I have extremely good success with soil blocking. And so I need to decide if I wanna keep these for a fourth year, and I don't know. I don't really think I wanna go through the effort of scrubbing them right now. I'm thinking I'm going to put them out in the shed, and then if I end up needing them, I can pull them, so I'm not gonna get rid of them yet. I can pull them, sanitize them, and then use them. But I think between all of my cells and my soil blocking, I don't think I'm gonna need these this year. So I think what now would be a good thing to do would be to start taking the things out of here that don't belong in here anymore. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put some gloves on because some of this stuff is dirty and it's gonna feel really, really good to get this clean. I feel like we've been spending so much time together organizing the pantry, the kitchen, now this room, and it's gonna feel so much more enjoyable to be out here with it clean. I mean, we had to address the fungus gnat issue. I also need to start putting together a list of things I need to purchase in order to be prepared to start sardine seeds. The equip, like the soil, the compost that I need. This used to be my waterer, except I've turned it into my weed killer and, so I can't use this to water anymore because I use this to spray on weeds. It's a organic or natural, it's just vinegar, salt, and soap that I spray on weeds and it kills them in the walkways. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get these green stalks out of here because that's something that will be a in big impact if I can just get these out of here. And I'm just gonna store these on my patio tucked toward the house. I don't know really why I brought them in here. I didn't really need to but I did and I kind of wish I hadn't of because they store there perfectly and they're out of sight of my kitchen. They are a lot lighter to move because, oh, because they're dried out. The soil that's in those pots, I'm gonna take that soil that has the infected plants and I'm gonna put that soil in the woods. I'm not gonna reuse it. It already feels better in here. 
These ones don't have wheels. I want to get wheels for all of my green stalks. So that's something I should put on the list. I really like that area. I probably should have put them there in the fall, but live and learn. So this is where I'll put them to bed next year. The main reason why I tucked these away is because I didn't really want them out on my patio and looking at them when they were empty. And so just tucking them up against this wall works perfect. My kitchen window's there. I cannot see them from here. So this is perfect. So happy with that. Those are gonna be, I have a lot of plans for those come this spring and they're gonna be beautiful, green, colorful with flowers. And it already feels better in here. I just feel like, oh, I can breathe. Makes a lot more sense to have them there. You wanna know something really funny? Josh, you may have heard me talk that Josh has been really working hard on getting our garage organized. He even scrubbed the floors and it's beautiful and nice if you can call a garage beautiful. And he came in here and he turned this on because this is water. I could have been watering my plants from right here all last year. And he forgot to mention to me that this is water. So I'm gonna get a hose in here so that I can actually, I might not even need a spray gun, I forgot. I can just use that water with a hose and start watering my seedlings that way. So that's really nice. Josh was doing some maintenance on my freeze dryer and then he was also accessing that water. And so that's why this is pushed back like this. So I'm gonna put this back and I just made yogurt yesterday using my dehydrator. So I'm gonna get my dehydrator trays back in here. I do plan to spray and kind of clean everything, but I think it's gonna be best if I put everything where it goes, get anything out of here that shouldn't be in here, and then we'll clean everything at the end. And then I'll bring back in the seed stuff once that's all dry and sanitized. So next thing on my list, I think what I'm gonna do is start removing the landscape fabric. I don't wanna get rid of this because I'm gonna reuse quite a bit of this this year, I think. And so I just put it in here for safekeeping. But you know what, maybe I could do? No, you know what, I think I'm gonna put this in the shed. I'm gonna put it in the shed. Okay. I might be crazy, but I'm gonna try to carry this all out together. Let's see if I can do this. Where there's a will, there is a way. There's a lot of fungus gnats on this. I'm glad I've decided to get rid of this. Which means I absolutely should take this one out too. I have to say it feels good to start moving stuff. Oh shoot, out of here. It feels like I can breathe in here a little bit better. Of course, we're gonna be moving all the seeds tray stuff back in, but that I can keep organized. So I think I wanna tackle this countertop. I've got some cleaner, some rags. We're gonna start by organizing this drawer actually, because some of the stuff in the counter, on the counter is actually gonna go in this drawer. And this reminds me, soil test kit. I should probably put that on my calendar to do in the next two months. And so that I'll have the results back by the time we go to plant. And I got some of my favorite gloves in my stocking this year. I used to love to buy my gloves at Costco and then the quality tanked. These are terrible. I was gonna return them, but I never got around to returning them. So I'm gonna organize this drawer with my gloves, I just have a little basket here that I had had in my house 
I've got a couple different styles of gloves. These are more like heavy duty type gloves. These gloves need to be ran through the wash. So I'm gonna bring these ones actually inside. I'm gonna make a pile over there. These ones are clean. This is what this drawer looks like. So I've got some scissors and box cutters and tools here, snippers. I think I'm gonna take all this out and go ahead and might as well just vacuum this since I brought the shop back in here. Might as well get it clean. I know this area is gonna get messy again, but you know, it'll be nice going into the growing season with a clean grow room. Put that there. in here too. Super happy with that. You know, I don't even know what's, okay, so these are, I don't think I'm gonna clean that out. Okay, so I've got my apron. This is a harvest apron. I should put all my harvest aprons in here. That's a really good idea. And then I've got this journal. This was a gift toward, I think it was toward the end of last year and I didn't use it. And I am going to use it this year for sure because I have record with you all online that I could go watch, <laughs> but it's not super concise like as if I could just pull a journal out and look at it. This is going to be a goal for this year. I'm actually gonna set this right here. I've got pins and what I wanna do is track everything I plant and when I plant it in a journal. I'm gonna do that written form this year. It's not my ideal way I just, it's not my personality to do that, but I'm committed. You all heard it here first. Hold me to it as best I can. <laughs> I will not be perfect at it, but it will be something that will be a goal. If it's not a goal, it definitely won't happen. So here I've got a garbage in here that's actually been a huge help keeping things clean and organized, but it's completely full. So I'm gonna empty it so we can go into seed starting with a new, trash bag and then as I find trash while we clean and organize I can just put it in this bag I don't think there's very much more trash that needs to be collected the bottom drawer is where I have these little stands to put pumpkins on I've had these for a long time and I completely forgot to use them last year so I'm gonna keep those in there and then these drawers are where I have my pots to up pot my seedlings into. I have more four inch cells here. I have tape in here. And then down here is where I've got my no sprout bird seed that I've been feeding the birds all winter, some fertilizer for the garden. And this is landscape fabric for bug netting. So in the uh, spring when I plant my cabbages, I'm gonna cover the crops with that. I bought that late spring. So all of these drawers and cupboards are cleaned and organized. So we're gonna turn our attention back to this. So I've got some seeds that I need to organize and put away. Some garlic that I need to deal with. So I'm gonna get that inside. Here I have a bunch of seeds that I never put into bags. So I'm gonna grab all those. Tons of seeds. I know what they all are, which is great. I think what I'm gonna do is grab all my seed boxes. Since I've got seeds I need to put away and I'm gonna start my seed inventory slash put those seeds away right now. Because I'm gonna be placing my last seed order today.
My favorite way to organize my seeds are using these photo organizers that you can get at your local craft store or online. I can link them if you're interested. I certainly did not come up with this idea. I have seen people, I had seen people do this for years and it works really well. The way that I have found that makes the most sense for me to organize my seeds is by whether I'm going to direct sow them or if they need to be started indoors. So, or, and they're kind of like cold weather crops versus warm weather crops. So one of my or containers are mostly things like cabbages, broccoli, cauliflower, lettuce, and they're like the cold weather type things. And then I have my other one that is peppers and tomatoes and summer squash and winter squash. And then I have, these are the ones that have this the seed packets that have smaller seeds in them. And then my other one that you'll see in a bit, that one has my big seeds like corn and peas and beans, things that you wouldn't be able to fit very many into one of the little photo organizers just because the seeds are so big. And what I'm doing now is I am organizing the seeds that I had saved and I'm putting them in the correct container. And I also have one that's mostly flowers. And this, the way I have them in here is not perfect. I think ideally it would be best to have one or to have them organized based on when you start your seeds. But I don't know, I get into them so much, they don't stay fully organized. So I have just found that to have one that's like more cold weather and one that's more warm weather works really well for me. And then I have one that is flowers and then one that is big seeds. So I tried to organize the seed packets that I had not organized from last year, but I've done a, I did a pretty good job, I would say, keeping things organized. You'll see I end up finding a huge stash of seeds and I get those organized in a bit, but that's what those are. So that felt pretty productive to get that done. And then now I'm gonna manage the seeds that I had saved. So these have been sitting here since we saved them, I don't know, when was that? Maybe like August or September. And I never got them into any sort of envelope. So I grabbed some envelopes and I'm just writing on them what they are and I'm getting them in here. Now these envelopes, I think were envelopes we've probably had for like 10 years. And so they don't close anymore. So I just folded it over. I realized I wrote that upside down. So I end up writing it the correct way. And we're going to attempt to try to grow some of these seeds that we had saved from last year's garden. That is one thing that I was trying to do a little bit more of last year. I am no expert seed saver, but now that I'm getting more comfortable just in general with gardening, I feel like each aspect of gardening is a huge skill to learn. You've got your seed starting, you've got your growing, you have your harvesting, your preserving, all these aspects of growing things have their own skill set within them and you know when i first started it was all i could do to try to grow something and attempt to try to start the seedling as well and so now that i'm getting more comfortable with those aspects of gardening i want to try to get a little bit more comfortable with seed saving so these zinnias they were some weird hybrid i did not buy this color zinnia last year but they produced the most incredible orange color. Orange is not my favorite, but the color of this zinnia was so beautiful and unique that I had to save the seed. And so I saved the seed. All I did was plop the head off, let it dry, and we're going to try to grow those out in 2024's garden. So my goal for 2024's garden is to create a beautiful garden. I want it to be abundant if possible with food, but I also want it to be beautiful. So I'm focusing heavily on flowers. I'm focusing heavily on some unique things I've never grown. So I'm pretty comfortable now growing tomatoes. I've got that. I feel like I can, as long as nothing crazy happens, I feel like I can grow a year's worth of tomatoes for Josh and I. And I feel like I can grow green beans really well and sugar snap peas and lettuce and kale and the, the couple things I wanna focus on are growing a lot more peppers. I've never really had a huge success for sweet peppers. I've done pretty well with hot peppers, but I want to try to really maximize how many sweet peppers I can grow. 
And I also want to grow some fun things I've never grown before. I want to experiment a little bit in the garden. And I want to experiment not just with food, but I also want to experiment with some flowers that I've never grown. So I ordered quite a few flowers I have never grown before. And so that's going to be fun. A couple of the things that I want to attempt to grow this year that I've never tried are peanuts and some edamame or soybeans. I love steamed soybeans or edamame. And so those are two things that I'm going to try to grow this year. It's just a fun thing. I want my garden to be really fun this year. I want to not only grow staples like potatoes and tomatoes and green beans and lettuce and those types of things, but I also want to have the joy that comes along with trying something and having it turn out. I mean, if it doesn't turn out, it's no big deal. Um, we're not going to starve. If my peanuts don't turn out and they don't grow and produce anything. But could you imagine if we are able to dig up peanuts, how fun that's going to be? Anything that grows in the ground that you get to harvest, I think is just so incredibly rewarding. And so we're going to try growing peanuts this year. I follow a gardener and she was growing peanuts and she harvested them and my mind was blown. <laughs> I don't know why I've never thought to grow peanuts, but that's something we're gonna try, and sweet potatoes. I've tried sweet potatoes one or two years and it's been a huge failure and I am going to try to grow sweet potatoes this year. So I'm really excited about that. So I'm just really excited about this year's garden because I really want it to just be fun. I want it to be beautiful and I want it to be fun. So. We don't have to worry about building the garden. All we have to do is worry about trying to grow things in the garden this year. Just like most things, this is definitely taking longer than anticipated. So officially now all the seeds are organized. I've got an idea of what I need order today so I can push the order button and things can start coming in. There's not as many seeds as I thought I needed. I mean, I have a lot of seeds. I don't need as many. Um, I'm probably will still order more than I need, but life of a gardener. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just start cleaning the rest of the areas. We just have dirt all over the floor and dirt on all of the lights, on the windowsill just from last year. I did not really do a deep clean on anything last year when I was done. So we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna start, I think what I'm gonna do, so we'll start in this corner and I'll just start working my way around top down, scrubbing everything, vacuuming everything. So I'll vacuum everything first before I wipe it down. But I think I'm just gonna work my way from right to left. Yes, this is going to get messy again, absolutely. But it's gonna feel nice going into the garden season with it nice and clean. And just so it doesn't get completely, I mean, we're gonna spend a lot of time out here. So just so that it doesn't get completely, you know, trashed, I probably should just go ahead and let's wipe underneath the heat mats. This from start to finish from Starting to scrub the trays to getting this area completely clean it probably took me a solid four or five hours. Getting the seeds organized and doing an inventory of the seeds and vacuuming and spraying everything down and putting the things away that go where they go. And I can tell you it was worth every minute of effort because this room feels so much better and I have already been excited to go in there. Now I haven't as of me talking to you right now, I have not started any seeds yet. I'm waiting for my compost to come because I got that ordered and I'm waiting for my seeds to still arrive. And so I haven't started anything yet. We will be starting seeds in January. I've got quite a few cold weather flowers that I need to get started. I want to start my brassicas and like my cabbage and broccoli and things like that way, way sooner than I have in the previous years. And I'm gonna be able to do that this year because the garden is already built. So last year at this point, the garden was not even, I didn't have my beds even in to be able to be planted until May. And the garden was still not even done, but they had soil in the beds in May. And this year, obviously I prepped the beds last year before I put the garden to bed I put 
compost and manure and soil amendments on each of the beds and I put a piece of landscape fabric on each bed. So as soon as I have something that can go in the ground, my bed is gonna be prepped and ready for me and that was worth the effort of doing that. But also getting this area clean is worth the effort because I can already tell you, even when I just go out there for the freeze dryer, it feels so good out there. One day I would love to paint the walls and remove the old carpet. This was the previous owner's woodworking shop. And so, you know, there's oil stains from oiling the wood projects and greasing the machines and things like that. So I would love to like maybe give this area a facelift, but for now, just getting it clean feels incredible. And I'm really looking forward to it. So some of the flowers that I need to start right away, I need to start my straw flowers my status snapdragons petunias ec uh not echinacea maybe i do i need to look that one up my eucalyptus but all of those not all the seeds but most of those seeds i don't even have yet so as soon as they arrive we can get started and it's going to feel really good to be able to start with a clean slate i did not end up on this day starting my sweet potato slips that's another thing that i need to get started really quickly here but i figured it would be best to get this area clean have the fungus snap traps up and start that once i notice that there are no additional fungus gnats being trapped in those traps then i will get my sweet potato slips started <sighs> we are almost done in here and then we can go inside and disinfect our trays they are most likely dry at this point i wanted them dry before I disinfected them so that when I spray them, ooh, there's something that needs to be vacuumed up. The vinegar would sit directly onto the tray, not on the water that I sprayed it onto. These were in my kitchen, but they were kind of cluttering up my kitchen I didn't want to get rid of them right away, so I figured this would be a good spot for them in the meantime. So we're going to test them out in here. These are the anti-fatigue mats. I do want to spray this table down real quick. Probably the outside of the freeze dryer dehydrators, I mean. Mine as well. While I'm wiping things down. Probably should have done this before I vacuumed. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna go put the shop back away, then I'm gonna show you what it looks like in here. Very, very, very happy with it. And I wanna check my traps to see if we caught any of the fungus nets. Here we go, so much better. I also went ahead and moved. I had here my freeze dryer, like oil and mylar bags and things, my equipment to do maintenance on the freeze dryer. I went ahead and put it in one of these cupboards so that one, I wasn't looking at it and two, it was closer to the freeze dryer. It just made more sense. So the only thing, oh, I could put this sealer in there too. So the only thing on this shelf are seed things. Those are more cilantro seeds down there. So let's check our nets. This one is clean, so no gnat on that one. This one is clean too, I think. All that on there is just, oh, nope. There's one there. And that side's clean. Those are just dirt pieces. Let's look over here. Oh, I can already see one. We got one there. You know, I guess I don't know for sure if these are fungus gnats. They could be something else, but I, I think that's what they are. When my pots were in here that had the pepper plants in it, there were tons of them flying around. I mean, tons, it was gross. I feel like just getting them out. I did that maybe five days ago where I put those outside. I feel like that is a huge thing. Getting all of the soil that could have been also harboring 
them plus their larvae out of here I think is a good thing. And getting all of that clean I think is a good thing. So now I'm sure those are good and ready for the next step. So here I'm gonna make my vinegar solution for the disinfecting purposes. I have, that's probably a little bit more than half. I have half this bottle filled with water and now I'm gonna fill the other half with vinegar and we're gonna spray down all of these trays. And I think I'm actually gonna take this out <laughs> into the grow room and I'm gonna spray everything down with vinegar out there. It smells like pickles in here. It's okay, it's worth it. I wouldn't do this though right before you're gonna have a dinner party. <laughs> party or guest over for dinner. Now online it said after 10 minutes you can wipe them off and then use them. But because I'm not gonna be using these for some of them for quite some time, some of them I'm gonna start seeds next week I think if I get to it, then I'm just gonna let this vinegar, well, did it say rinse off? See now I need to relook at my No, I think I'm just gonna let, well, let me look at the, what it says. Cause if I need to rinse it off after 10 minutes, it says let it sit on there for 10 minutes and then thoroughly rinse. So I am going to follow the directions. I was just gonna let it sit, but it says we need to rinse it off. So it might be because you don't want this type of acidity sitting next to your soil. The ones where I'm gonna put trays, I guess it probably wouldn't matter that much, but the ones where I'm gonna do soil blocks, it would. I used all but about an eighth of this bottle to spray that down while that's sitting for 10 minutes. We're gonna go out into the grow room and I'm gonna spray everything down out here as well. Might as well, right? Done. Now it's been 10 minutes. I think I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off those trays. Last year, I did not do this. I did not go through the effort of scrubbing down each tray and disinfecting it, and I didn't have an issue. But this year with the fungus gnats and the fact that I actually had some time on this day to do it, I thought, if I already know I have a problem with fungus gnats, I, I know that I can try to prevent fungus issues and mold issues with my seedlings if I take the effort to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and take the effort to do this. And so that is why I decided to do it this year. If I could kind of reduce the risk of one thing, <laughs> I was gonna do it. And then I did mop the floor because there was a ton of vinegar on my floor from spraying all of these. I went through a lot of vinegar to get this done. So after they sat for the 10 minutes, I just rinsed them all off and then I'm gonna let them air dry on my counter here. I have to say this feels really good to get this done. So I'm gonna let this sit and air dry with all the grooves and everything in them. They hold on to quite a bit of moisture and I am actually gonna get going on dinner right now because I am gonna get going on dinner. So I'm just gonna let these air dry. Once they're air dry, I will stack them up in the grow room and we are gonna be all set. I, tonight after dinner, and when I have a few minutes just to sit and quiet, I'm gonna go through the three different companies that I still have orders in my cart, but I have not pushed order yet. I know there's things that I can take out of my cart <laughs> because I, when I was going through my seeds, I found them already and I don't need to have duplicates. So that felt really, really good. I am so excited for garden season. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> to see what this year has in store. I have some really fun, exciting things that I'm gonna to attempt to grow this year that I have never grown, never thought I would attempt to grow. So it's gonna be a fun year, hopefully expanding our 
knowledge and abilities on growing fun things, beautiful things, tasty things, and so it's gonna be great. So thank you for being here. I'll pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being you, and I can't wait to see you next time. An update on the traps. This one has one, two, three. This is the next day. This one has none on this side. Oh, but we've got two on this side. And this one has one, two, three.